Let's do it. Hi, um, Mahmoud. Uh, thank you for helping me with my project. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for uh, inviting me, uh, obviously. Thanks a lot. Uh, could you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, go ahead. Well, my name is, like you said, Mahmoud Mohammed Mahmoud, and I am living in uh, Houston. And uh, um, I've been living here for like a long time, almost like 40 years. It's about the and, same length uh, of time I've been living here, too. Sorry, the uh, voice uh, was a little distracted. Um, uh, what was your question again? Oh, I, I said I, I've also been living here for about 40 years. Oh, uh, in the, uh, which part? The uh, same Tombal area, uh, North Houston? Um, that and also or, uh, you were... I went to a school at uh, Houston Baptist University right there on 59 near um, uh, near uh, Fondren. Uh, so I used to live around that part for a while, but. So that was pretty much Southwest, yeah, that's right. And I lived out in Missouri so, City uh, at one so how point. how do you like living in Houston? I mean, you've been here for... uh, Sorry? It's, I, I lived in Missouri City at one point also. Um, uh, but uh, Houston's okay. It's a big city. It's everything spread out. Um, you know, it's it seems like a more like a collection of a whole bunch of towns that are close together instead of a big city. How about you? Well, uh, it's okay. I mean, honest, honestly, I mean, it's not that um, I love it. I used to live in Phoenix. And to be honest, I like or better over there than here. For what reasons, I don't know. I think Houston is too big, that's like you said, is one reason. It's too, too crowded. And uh, since it's too crowded, it's people are scattered. <laughs> in, in Phoenix, uh, which actually used to live in Tempe, I don't know if you heard of that. It's a small little town by the Phoenix. And it's a small little community, and people know each other, and um, you know they were friendly to each other. Everybody had time down here things are other way around <clears throat> it's not much of at least for me it's not much of uh, social socialization yeah I, I guess uh, also we have the hurricanes and the flooding um, what kind of issues do they have in Arizona well none except the heat in summer mm. and uh, I guess dry, dry climate yeah. If you get over with that heat, it's three, four months, three months. I mean, it's an excellent climate over there. Dry, nice, and uh, once winter especially is great. And um, uh, it's a lot, It's very nice. It feels good over there. It feels light. Houston is pretty uh, get humid, and especially in summer when it gets hot. So it's it's nice over there. But I've been here for a long time anyway because due to I have a lot of family here. So, and this is, my kids growing up here, so they, that's their hometown. So I'm pretty much, um, have not much of a choice except if I will run away. <laughs> or, or the other thing is maybe uh, some type of family reunion in Phoenix and sell the idea to the entire family. No, oh, no, 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 let's be honest, this is, this is the hometown now. I mean, I don't have much choice except I can take it out, take myself out of it. But no, no, there are a lot of people here. I mean, for uh, for the family, there's a lot of a lot of family here. I'm sure you must have met Rehan as well. Uh, have yes. you ever met him? I did. Yeah, I met him. Told you. Yeah. I met him at the the mosque up here um, on Old Loetta. Um, one time, I think it was like it feels like ten years ago, but maybe it was sooner than that. Oh, ten years ago. Oh, oh, mosque? Why in mosque? Are you uh, you Muslim? Uh, no, my friend invited me for um, Ramadan. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I think he oh, was uh, hosting. In a week, next. I think he was hosting the yeah. dinner. So, um, you know, he had invited his uh, friends uh, to come. Oh, I see. Oh, so how do you, how do you, but that's a long time ago. Did you have a chance to go back after that? Uh, yes, uh, a few times. Um, uh, same reason. <laughs> 
um, they're very good friends of mine. So um, we we yeah. try to support each other. So Nathan, you were talking about uh, project. What what project is that really? I mean, I I I have an idea. Like you're talking about uh, meeting 550 or 500 people or something like that. But uh, is that what you're talking about? Okay, uh, so NASA is planning to send people back to the moon in 2024. And I got this idea of interviewing uh, a different person every day to find out uh, what they think about it uh, between now and 2024. So that's like another 1,720 days and interviews. Oh, wow. So how has it been going so far? It's been good. Have you it's been, been successful getting one? one day? I, I have. I started uh, with 1,840 days to go, so I guess that means I've done about 120 uh, so far. Um, my plan was to do them all in person uh, to sort of get me out of the house because I work at home. But with this uh, COVID-19 thing, I I've have to uh, do them virtually. So I've been trying to connect with people online. So you said you're going to take a man to the moon in 2020, 2024? Is that what you're saying? Um, so NASA is going back to the moon. Um, you know, they're NASA. exactly. And um, I thought this would be a, so. Um, I work in the software industry, so I don't actually do anything with space, but it's a passion of mine, a hobby. And I thought this would be a good way to uh, kind of connect with the broader set of people and and uh, you know get some more more thoughts on the matter. So what is that you like to hear from the people? What is that you're really looking for? What, what is the uh, core, uh, core parts you have? Well, uh, the, the very first thing is just um, trying to understand people's awareness of uh, what we're doing in space. Um, for example, did you, had you heard before that we're going to the moon in 2024? Or is this the first time you're hearing it? No. Yeah, I, I, I think I've seen on your, um, somewhere on, on your um, uh, Facebook, but uh, no, it's the first time I, I heard about it. And uh, do you know the last time no, we went no, to I the moon? Do you know the last yeah, time we went to the moon? I believe. Um, yeah, 67? 69 was the first, and then 72 was the last time. Yeah, there was, I, I've seen a movie, Apollo 13 or 14, something like that. They were talking about there were some aliens down, they found down there, something of that nature. Some. Is that uh, what, what has has did do you think it had any truth in it, uh, any validity? I haven't uh, seen anything that uh, strikes me as being true regarding aliens. Um, so I mean, Apollo thirteen was the one they launched, and on the way, um, they had a, a an accident, and there's uh, they had to do a lot of improv uh, improvisation and uh, engineering and what have you to try to get the astronauts back safely. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, in terms of aliens, I, I really, I really don't know. I, I think, you know, considering how small the earth is and how big the universe is, uh, just going and figuring out how to spread humanity and life off of earth, uh, seems to be, uh, more important than, than maybe, um, aliens, uh, from my standpoint. Yeah, never know. A virus can wipe out the population of whole world. So you better have uh, somewhere something to linger on. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And uh, plus, you know, we talk about these labs that work with very dangerous uh, viruses and pathogens. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of uh, protection that's done to try to keep the, the people safe. Um, but regardless of what you do, you can always have unexpected things happen on Earth and it gets out. You know, somebody doesn't uh, put on the coat or there's a, um, you know, a, a cut in the seal or, um, you know, maybe there's an earthquake and the building falls apart and it gets out, you know, things like this. But if we did those types of um, experiments, you know, on the moon or in space, then that would provide another uh, level of safety uh, for the people here, I think. Yeah, it's possible. If you find a similar climate over there, that may be a thing. You have to uh, create a similar cli climate to make those experiments. Yeah, it's possible. On Mars, especially. 
Yeah, Mars is really, uh, really cold and, um, you know, is lacking a, a lot of uh, air. You know, the air is very thin. Um, so what do you think about space exploration? That's going back to the moon. Um, do you think maybe uh, that's a good thing or a waste of money or um, like how's it fit in sort of your world? Well, obviously, it's a good thing, no doubt about it. I mean, the more you know, the better it is. Yeah, I've heard some people say, though, you know, why are we going to the moon when there's so many problems here on Earth? And I was just wondering what you thought about that. Escaping from the problems? <laughs> no, it's obviously, it's always good to go. And uh, uh, maybe the only problem is that, uh, not a problem, uh, well, it's not a really problem, but yeah, you can use that for defense purposes. Get your guns on the moon and then hit anybody you want to. Just look at it, aim it, and <laughs> nobody's safe no more. Since the world has gone so much, uh, I mean, technology have improved so much. You can uh, the 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 uh, the scope uh, uh, to, uh, to see the world has improved so much. I mean, to see the distance, the the ability to look far is is uh, is has gone improved a lot. So yeah, you can. It would be another satellite, like thingy. It's basically, you know, we have artificial set satellites, so that would be a natural satellite, and will be there forever for a long time at least. Yeah, it's a worthwhile. Obviously, it must have a lot of commercial uses and defense uses, and and uh, learning uses. Um, I think they say that the story of the Earth is in Moon because there probably was the most part same is a part of one body which is split and become a Moon. I mean, they say that. Well, Allah, God knows. I don't know. So this is yeah your. The his the, the these, uh, geology of this of this Earth uh, has the clues inside the Moon. I don't know how, but but this is what I heard. What you well, you must have a lot of knowledge about it. You tell me what is the use of going there. Oh, right, but you you said something that I, I was just writing down. The story of the Earth is in the Moon which I think is a, a beautiful way to kind of express another concept. So you mentioned that perhaps the um, moon uh, broke off of the earth or, you know, something hit the earth and, you know, that caused the moon to be formed. But there's another way that the, uh, the moon is the story of the earth. Um, you know, all the time we're having asteroids and meteors hitting the earth. And most of those meteors actually burn up in the atmosphere or land in the ocean. And the ones that do land on land get, um, you know, the rain and the cold and the vegetation, everything causes them to wear away. And so this has been happening for millions and billions of years, but we really don't have a good record of it here on Earth. But the moon's been traveling with the Earth for all that time. And the same types of things that have been hitting the Earth have also been hitting the moon. So in that respect, the moon is also a good record of, you know, how frequent have these uh, meteors been in the past? What are they made out of? Um, you know, uh, what does this tell us for the potential for having meteors of big enough to hurt the earth coming in the future? Um, based upon what they're likely made out of, is there a way that we can somehow protect the earth by destroying the meteor or moving it to the side. Um, so I, I think, you know, kind of understanding Earth through that record that's on the moon is, is one reason that I think is good for us to explore. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that could be a good reason too, yeah. But I think, uh, uh, America thinks of the defense first <laughs> than anything else. So it's probably it must have a defensive uh, reasons also to, uh, to plant a razor gun over there. That was one idea I was long time in. I think it's an old idea probably. 
I mean, it's a good place to look at the world from. I mean, you can sit over there and it's, and uh, you can see the whole whole world, whatever is happening, it's, since the world is spinning anyway. So in one day, you, I, I think, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure I don't know. But yeah, there must be, there must be a lot of reasons. Uh, yeah, I mean, and of course, and then this is this, uh, the base a station to to explore further uh, exploration. I mean, you, because you're getting out of gravity of the of the Earth is harder than the gravity of the Moon. Uh, obviously, it takes a lot of energy to get out of the Earth's gravity, and uh, it takes uh, then it's kind of uh, uh, put a little hindrance to how further you can go. Uh, I'm just assuming all those things, obviously. <laughs> I don't know. It's, you know a lot, Nathan. Why don't you say, man? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot to talk of something which I have don't have much clue except what I see a little bit on the YouTube. No, no, that's that's a, a lot of what you're saying is uh, absolutely right. You know, the gravity uh, of the uh, moon is less than the Earth. Uh, we can mine stuff on the moon and build things on the moon. Uh, yes, about uh, one yeah. six, one seven, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, somewhere around there. Yeah. So, I, I, the the other question I'd like to ask people is: If it was safe and affordable, would you have any interest in going into space yourself? Do I have, do I have interest? Safe and uh, affordable, if I can afford it. Yep, yep. Like an uh, airline ticket to New Zealand, for an example. Uh, something in that ballpark. Depending, uh, yeah. It's, uh, depending, it's a real, it's a relativity question. Uh, afford it? How? Like, if I have to spend all my money into it? No. If I spend little money, like I'm going to the California, for example. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's of course, it's a, it's a question has relativity to it. It's just, and safe, yeah. You said safe, like I say, going to the, sitting in an airplane, going to California, as safe as that. Yeah, I will. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm sure most of the people would. But it's a, uh, it's a very relative term, though. It is, yeah. I mean, uh, like in terms of safety, do you need like only ten or twenty people to go before you, or do you need a million people to go without incident? You know, I mean, it's like uh, how how safe? Well, that, that's kind of the problem. Yeah. Some billionaires are trying to go, right? That's what you're really getting to it. Uh, but those are billionaires. And they, uh, I mean, for them, it's, it's more, of a, um, ex, uh, more of a thing that uh, they want to explore. But at the same time, it's an egotistical thing too. I mean, I am going to the moon. Nobody has a chance. I mean, with all that money, what I'm going to do with the money? Let's go to the moon. So, you know, it's kind of that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, it's more of it, but later in the uh, uh, later when the things would be much more uh, normal, then it's not so much of ego still, but it uh, it would be more of ex, uh, personal uh, ambition, personal interest in exploring, looking at the Earth from far distance. Probably one of the most exciting part of this whole um, whole journey. Uh, rather than looking at the moon, probably we like to live. We like to look at the uh, home first before we see something else. This is our nature. Hey, you know, if you look at the map. The first thing you want to see is, hey, where's my home at? Exactly. Then looking for the home. So that's for that's the first thing, right? So Google Earth. First thing we look at well, how my uh, house look from the uh, from a satellite from the far distance or from the, from the top view. It's nature. It's natural. We love home more than anything else, regardless what. Yeah, if let's for the sake of argument, is a bomb uh, blow up the whole moon, we would care less than bombing some bomb blow up in Houston. So, may, maybe not with uh, maybe not that much of uh, relativity, but yeah, or probably so. My, my body, if if a pin poked to my body, is far more. Um, it takes more attention than 20 people got killed somewhere else. So I think we look into ourselves before we look somewhere else. This is this is how we are. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, um, 
the, the first thing you do whenever you get like the satellite Google Earth, like you said, is look at your house and then you start looking at your neighbors and you start looking at your community and you're like, wow. Looks like uh, maybe the uh, connection's gotten um, uh, bad. Oh, there you are. Hello. Oh, hello. Okay, okay. Oh, sorry. There was a phone call which uh, I had to take it. Um, so sorry for that. Oh, no worries. Yeah, no. It just looked. It just had you frozen there for a while, so I didn't know uh, what was what was happening. What so. Happened? Well, uh, those are the three questions I usually ask. Uh, did you have any like uh, closing comments? No closing comments. So, what would uh, how would it help you? Why you want to question one thousand people or more? Uh, what would you gain from it, or how would you utilize your your knowledge and understanding? Well, um, so there's several aspects to that. One is, I think, just going out and talking to people and having um, kind of uh, a substantive conversation uh, is beneficial in itself. Meeting people and getting an idea on what they think and how they talk about what they think and what they understand from what you're saying and all of that. So I think just from a personal growth standpoint, I think getting to talk to um uh, almost 2,000 people uh, through conversations like this will help people, uh, help me learn to communicate better and to listen better and understand that. Uh, the, the second thing is um, I like to see how people's perceptions and attitudes change as right now we're like five years away and then how about when we're four years away and three years away and two years away and then we're actually uh, you know the people are on their way to the moon and they're on the moon and then afterwards and get to see that shift in in sort of people's awareness uh, because like right now i've interviewed maybe 120 people and only about 15 of them knew we were going to the moon but if i do this interview again like two years from now will that number be reversed out of uh, 120 interviews? Would it be more like only 15 didn't know we were going because by that time we've made enough progress and it's, it's um, people have gotten excited about it or well, does it still stay the same? So I'm kind of curious in that. And then also sort of uh, trying to understand people's views in terms of what is the future of humanity? Um, are we content to just you know, live and eventually die here on the earth? Or, you know, do we see the universe as being so huge and it's just like natural for us to kind of figure out how to expand out and, uh, you know, uh, get into the rest of the universe as it will. So that's that's pretty much the, the thought I had. So how much do you know about the Titan satellite? Uh, is satellite in Jupiter or, or Saturn? Saturn satellite, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. I know we, we sent a satellite, uh, you know, we sent a probe to Saturn called Cassini, I think is what it was. And it did some uh, flybys of some of the moons. And then we did a, a we sent a, 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 you know, a probe to Jupiter called a Juno. I believe that's what it was. And both of those um, planets. Um, have lots and lots of moons. Uh, and some of those moons are, are bigger than our moon, in fact. Um, and some of them have water and some of them have um, uh, atmospheres. Uh, so it's really an interesting place. I mean, you think about um, the future of humanity as, you know, we, we go and, you know, we, we start mining and manufacturing stuff on the moon. We create a city on Mars. Then, you know, eventually after that, maybe we're mining and uh, doing stuff in asteroid belt and then we're building places on the moons of uh, Jupiter and Saturn and then eventually you know maybe we're sending people to another star at some point. I have another question it's, it's not uh, uh, to your topic 
to my from, from my understanding, you went to must uh, must two three times, like you said. Well, so, what was your perception? Honest, if you, I mean, I would like to hear your your real per perception. So what you, what was your perception about when you went to those places, went to the mosque? Oh, my perception of the mosque. Um, so one thing is, I, I love the, um, you know, the community coming together uh, on a regular basis and hanging out with each other. Uh, you know, learning from each other. I think that's important. Um, I didn't like the, um, you know, kind of like the the segregation between the the women and the men. I know that's a very traditional thing, uh, but just from my um, kind of uh, background here, um, you know, that that seems to be um, maybe a um, discrimination. Yeah. I understand from a practical standpoint uh, why we might uh, have that because of just the the close proximity and you know the need for the space and maybe um, it helps to avoid a lot of issues um, having the the separation there. Um, I, I like the traditions. I think traditions are important for uh, keeping a group of people uh, together. I mean the the idea of a whole like community going through um, the same um, fasting and eating and dinner and then um, having different families uh, share that responsibility. Um, you know, I, I definitely think that's a good way to like strengthen the community. Um, um, I think uh, looking at life um, with a higher purpose and knowing that, you know, we are just part of, um, kind of like a bigger plan um, is good. I think sometimes though, um, you know, it might be difficult uh, to uh, be open uh, to the fact that, you know, on one hand, uh, we say that God is beyond our understanding, but on the other hand, there's people who are willing to explain exactly what he is or isn't. Uh, so, you know, you can't really have it both ways. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, th those are just my thoughts. So the, basically, uh, uh, you just uh, so you, they did try to explain Islam to you. I mean, it sounds like that. You, you mentioned about the understanding of God in two ways, and that was your confusion. That how is it possible that either you're saying 99 attributes to God at the same time, we all know the uh, God Himself is saying is I'm beyond understanding anything you can think of imagine or imagine right right yeah so why is I mean, it's, uh, it could be it could cause confusion but at the same time those are the only attributes we are discussing and a part of god you know god is infinite the way we understand like we know the universe is infinite and it's expanding at the same time so uh, uh, all we know is about little earth and when, when we learn about galaxy, we thought this may be the whole universe. But then we found out this is only a small little galaxy among two billions or more galaxies is, is, are there. And maybe this is also our limited knowledge, to be honest. I mean, look, look, we are growing in our knowledge. It is not the ultimate knowledge we have. We are just growing. And maybe there, we are part of the, right now all these galaxies could be a part of a small little galaxy and there could be a, a more of the same universes uh, are are there than we could even think of. so that's that's i mean it's just with us using a similar analogy the size of the universe and shows the size of the one who made it and uh, the strength or the, the character of the one who made it, if you do believe there is one person who, who there is one entity who made all this <clears throat> so what do we so what do we see as 99 attributes it's maybe a small little tiny part of what his character is all about or his entity is all about or is or his uh, or he's all about he's far more than a small little entity uh, in understanding of 99 attributes we understand so yes, both the uh, sides fits into it. Is there is no confusion in it? It's just understanding the way we look. We are we we are sh uh, we are um, uh, sh um, 
minimize the God by saying that this God is saying this, and then we God is saying this, uh, like uh, I am, um, I cannot be understood. So how is that possible? This is uh, the, because our limited brain we are thinking of this. But the God is, who knows? God is God. You know, it's beyond our understanding. It's a small little uh, uh, picture you have seen. A, a, a nursery student or KG student knows only ABC, but the PhD student knows it a lot more than ABC. So, and, they, and, and that, uh, like uh, there's a famous saying, um, uh, uh, or, uh, a small, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I mean, losing a memory, that's the shock in a pond, thinks that the whole world is, is this pond. So, this is the famous saying. So, we are, the, we are a frog in the pond, maybe less than that, actually, a lot less than that. Even that, you know, you don't fit. A card, uh, you, uh, I'm sure you understand, in your understanding, it doesn't fit. That we are, uh, we uh, even that in the analogy that frog in the pond uh, fits on, on when you be talking about the universe. We are less than a pond. Uh, it is less than a pond. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, think of this. I think you're 100 percent right. I, I mean, I think um, basically uh, the amount of our understanding is so small compared to how big our ignorance and what we have yet to learn. And we should be mm -hmm. open to learning from any source. Um, and we should also kind of trust. I, I think we have to uh, sort of um, struggle uh, with any knowledge and constantly question and relook at what we think we know and say, is it because, do I think this just because somebody else told me this? or because everybody around me seems to think this. I mean, you see that right now with like this whole COVID-19 thing. You know, people say, oh, you should do this, or you shouldn't do that, or you shouldn't do this. But, you know, a lot of the times you ask them, well, why shouldn't I do that? Or why should you do that? And they're like, well, everybody else says that. Or, you know, these three people say that. But, you know, they don't go into the why or how do you know that's true? You know, it's like, um, and, and so, you know, we kind of have to, we need to keep working at it into it makes sense to us, I think. Yeah, you sounds like pretty much like agnostic, if, if I'm not wrong. Uh, are you? Oh, uh, I, I don't I don't know. I, I'm searching. How about that? I'm searching. Uh, yeah, that's why I use that word. The atheist is probably a better word, but uh, I use it a little softer. Uh, so, yes, you believe in a higher power. You mentioned that, but, it's, but that's about Yes. The Quran, I agree with 120%. And the Quran does agree with you. And the same time. Quran has the, has, has this in the Quran that so many hundreds in different places. And why don't you think? Why don't you look? Why don't you discover? Why, what are you? Are you going to follow your ancestor way? Even if they were wrong, why don't you think? You know, it's full of it. So what book will challenge your brain and, and will challenge you that, uh, okay, if you, got, uh, you think I'm wrong, then uh, there are uh, challenges in the Quran, which is uh, uh, basically for Arabs, like uh, linguistic challenges. And if you think this book uh, is made up by men, then bring one of this, of, of, of this kind. But we know you cannot even, you can't even bring a chapter like this. This is a linguistic challenge. And it's, to be honest, I don't understand that too, because I'm not Arab. It's for the Arabs. So, but there are so many places that Quran is talking about that don't follow the way of your ancestor. Use your brain because you are accountable of your own deeds. You are not accountable for your ancestor deeds. You will be only accountable of your deeds. Uh, yeah, that's uh, how the Quran challenges. Quran sees, sees is ex exactly agreeing with you, to be honest. If you read the Quran, by the way, uh, this is uh, just a... Uh, uh, this COVID-19, the word 19, you know, I was thinking last night, there is a, uh, there is a, uh, if you look at Google, if you Google it, it's numerical code of the Quran. And you'll see the word, the uh, digits 19 have something to do with it. I read it a long time ago, like 20 years ago. So I'm going to read it again because I forgot. It has 
like uh, you will be surprised because I, you know, I have that uh, concept in my mind, but the exact memory that you will be surprised how this word 19 goes like the uh, the surah of one divided by 19, the, the ayat, which you know, uh, in English called words, but not the right translation, are, uh, has to do with the 19, the letters have to do with 19, and so many things have to do with the 19. It is like a, it's called a, a, a numerical, a numerical miracle of Quran or arithmetical miracle of Quran. One of those two things. You should, you should check it out since you are men of science. You you may surprise. Uh, you know, I don't know. But yeah, you might. Well, I don't know if it has anything to do with the word 19 or not, but just uh, since the word 19 came out, so it just reminded me. I'll have to check it out. Um, I'm definitely uh, willing to learn and explore. Um, there's just so much in the world to uh, learn and explore. It's sometimes hard to make time for all of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so especially if you have a job to do and, uh, and family and, uh, you, you know, then we have to worry about all those uh, bills to pay. And, I mean, of course, it takes most of our attention and energy and time <laughs> well it's been a pleasure talking to you and uh, if you if you like to know about islam and whatever i know i would i would love to be talk about it I, i'm not saying help you but that you talk about it yeah no that sounds good i wish somebody would take up a similar project like this but for islam you know go around and ask uh you know, maybe a thousand people who aren't Muslim. You know, what do you know about Islam? You know, uh, what do you what do you think it's about? What does this make sense to you? I mean, that would be kind of a cool project. That's true. Actually, when you were talking about it, uh, um, explaining your project, so I, I had something more going on in my mind. To uh, I was like, uh, the, the purpose of life. So I was talking about it. I talked to, uh, actually I made a little video, which didn't, uh, uh, a Facebook video, it didn't appear, or something went wrong. But then I talked to somebody yesterday and my mind went black on me, blank on me. So so I, would, I think that was very interesting, at least from my perspective. But I think, I was thinking maybe I should uh, do the same thing what you're doing. So improve me, I forget about everybody else. Just to improve me, that's uh, my understanding. You know, I will I will learn different perceptions on on that subject. Maybe there's uh, something more to learn. Maybe there's something I misunderstand. So yeah, I was thinking on that. But what you said is also really nice. But that could go with the Muslims and non-Muslims. In fact, that could open the it's it's a it's it's a, it's a prime subject for everybody, regardless of the their uh, their. Uh, the ideology. So in that, I mean, regardless, instead of going asking that question about Islam, because a lot of people get, uh, are not interested in Islam, but this may be a better way to approach people than to ask about what you think about Islam, because this will open eventually my perception of Islam and their perception of their uh, beliefs. What's okay? Let's get started with you. <laughs> okay. So what is the purpose of your life? So what do you think the purpose of life? About the origin of life, you said? No, what is the purpose of your life? Why are you are, what do you think? Uh, you are here just as an accident, or you are sent, you've been programmed here, you've been sent here from higher source, or uh, what do you think? Well, I would like to hope I'm not a robot and that I wasn't sent here, uh, you know, just to, you know, carry out uh, somebody else's. Uh, I command. I, I would like to think I'm uh, I able to think and um, make my own choices and kind of uh, choose. What's the purpose of my life? I ask myself that a lot and I come up with answers, but I've not come up with anything that sticks. Uh, so that, um, you know, is something that I find really challenging. So I, I don't know yet. Um, I hope I figure it out before it's too late. <laughs> Well, I, I have come up with a small little clue that the purpose of life is to satisfy the ego. 
that is the my understanding i just uh and basically whatever makes one person happy is, is what you mean like the purpose of life is happiness yeah whatever satisfies your ego it could be negative positive killing somebody making billion dollars finding the uh, marrying some most prettiest or or uh, having 100 kids you know whatever it's it's the ego which is the total uh uh or uh, you call it the, the motivator uh of the force behind our motivation the force behind our our um, action is the ego which is actually dictating or if not dictating us at least are pursuing us or uh, motive or uh, is, is pursuing is the right word us in for the, in this particular direction satisfaction of ego that is my understanding and then further um, it goes further like super ego or the other theory but uh, that is a smaller part it's a uh, in the Quran explains a little further but we don't want to get into that we want to stay stick to the uh, ourselves that yeah is my ego is everywhere i see whatever i'm doing i'm saying i'm, I'm feeling i'm thinking is all about my ego that's uh that's interesting i'm i and so then why are people unhappy why are i'm happy because they they want to be happy <laughs> that's the ego too, i'm telling you that's why i use the word negative yes look at it they are unhappy because they satisfying their ego look i'm unhappy because i'm punishing myself or punishing somebody else you know so my because i'm satisfying my ego somewhere down in deep inside that's what makes my ego uh, happy and because i'm sad because i'm not successful because i'm i'm um, not um, doing something it's ego and ego of course could be a, a wounded ego could be a or inflated ego or could be a balanced ego you know for the for the classic uh, uh, this classification of ego ego you know inflated ego a lot of people have inflated ego they are they are arrogant in the common world have yeah, the uh, uh, hurt ego in the childhood the ego got hurt because of so many reasons starting from the parents the hurt ego is hurt is is in tragedy and he can and he wants to punish himself punish himself no i know i'm going to punish myself people suicide why they are suicide there must be a reason for it they must probably making them happy to suicide right it's got to be the ego so, is satisfied i'm going to kill you huh? how so, how would you define ego like uh what yeah, i don't know ego how can different but that has to take religion and church without religion we cannot define it. but my because my understanding of ego is like a god you know the god has a character that i am god the ego is a similar thing i am god ego wants to dictate that i am god everything is for me you know molana room uh, you probably heard of him molana room have you uh, rumi rumi sufi rumi have you heard of that okay anyway he's a sufi rumi. he said uh, uh, if i had the power of pharaoh i would be like him he was a sufi saint right if i had the power of pharaoh i would be like him so basically all he's saying you know the power of an absolute power corrupts absolutely so that's all that's what it's all about ego is what seeks power and then again the power gets more corrupt ego is uh, if, it, if you crush the ego it will be sitting it will be a weak ego but it's still there and it will still will motivate the person to things whether it's suicide crying, sad depressed or happy it's all about ego the word in ego is called nafs and the knowledge of nafs or knowledge of ego in arabic is called nafsiyat in translation in english is psychology hmm. so psychology and nafsiyat 
world is connection and should look into it. But it's the same, same, it's the same uh, meaning. The knowledge of uh, nafs is nafasiyat, and the knowledge of psychic is psychology. Right? It's probably what what we understand. Uh, now, do you think uh, people can change yeah. their ego? Understanding, understanding of the ego. Mm -hmm. But then the religion comes into it. But without the religion, the understanding of the ego to to seek the fear and just path is the is is the path which will contain the ego, not to make it happy, but to contain it. And that is the opening of the universe, because you are out of the ego into the into the world and looking into the world rather than looking into ego. That's the that's what I understand: the fairness and justice. Because every ego will make you do things which you don't, which may not be right. Right? I'm, I'm sure this is how we all understand. So if you if you follow the ego as well, May not be just path, but if you follow the, the internal path, the path of the understanding, the path of the uh, uh, of the righteousness. Well, righteousness word is not good. The path of the understanding of the fairness. Uh, we are coming out of the ego. We are no more in our ego. That is only contain it, not to kill it. And the ego is not a bad thing. At the same time, ego is a good thing. Ego is a generator for us to do things, but with with, with understanding that why we are doing is it for the sake of ego or is it for the sake of uh, of something else, something better. So, yeah, yeah, I've been um, reading uh, a book on the teachings of Buddha. And in it, it talks mm -hmm. about, um, you know, your your true nature, like your your deepest nature, is pure, but then it gets corrupted uh, by your life experiences and by desire and by uh, things that uh, distract you, and that um, one of the challenges that you have to do is sort of dig in through all of that misunderstanding. And all of that um, sort of, you know, worldly desires to try to reconnect with um, your true and pure self. I was wondering if that sort of touches on what you're talking about. Yeah, Islam is similar. Islam says you are not born on the original sin. In fact, Islam says that you are born in the purest nature, clean nature. But this Islam does not go as far as the Buddha goes, because Islam, or the monks goes, Islam says, the Prophet, says, the Prophet Muhammad is the blessing of one says that even your loves, your ego have the right on you. And there are things like eating, for example, eating, having sex, or wife, or kids, or worldly goods, are actually, is the part of your, is, uh, a, 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 your ego has a right over you, means on those things, you must provide those things to your ego. Just don't kill it. I mean, uh, killing is not the answer, but to containing is the answer. To maintaining is the answer. And to making a healthy ego. Make your ego healthy so you will be happier. So you will be able to do it. See, all these, uh, um, why would I, all these, uh, what can I say, the, uh, um, the improvement in this world causes two things, in my understanding. One is the woman. And the other one ego. Why? This is a combination of these two. Because if the woman doesn't exist, there will be no economy. <laughs> there will be nothing to sell. Nobody to buy. So what we do is a lot of times we men are actually buying things for the um, doing things because to make the woman happy. And, and most of the time, there are very few things which which we do for to our uh, to make us happy, to make men happy. And then we have an ego, and if the, our wives and kids are happy, our ego is happy at the same time. If because we feel like we are doing something right, if, because some, most of the time they don't get happy. But anyway, this is what we keep on trying to make them happy, and 
most of the times it's involved in shooting. They I know, I know. I think it's safer to stick with religion than talk about this subject. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's that was my personal view. Anyway. No, no, I, I, I agree. I was just joking. You know, uh, uh, my, uh, yeah, I, I think my wife would challenge um, the thought that everything we buy is to make her happy. <laughs> yeah, let's they will always challenge that. So you have done nothing for me. What do you have done for me? Okay, mm. yeah, this is the. And this is a different subject, like you said. But anyway, this is how I, uh, uh, this is a lot more to it, obviously. But uh, it comes to religion, then Islam meaning submission. Meaning of Islam is submission. And you, uh, the basic idea is that ego desires to submit your, your e, uh, egotistic thoughts and desires to, to, to the will of God. That's all, all it means um, by the word Islam, submission to the will of God. And then, uh, then it's the question of whether you really believe in God or not. You know, if you, if you believe in God, then you have no choice. I have no choice. But if I don't believe in God, then obviously I'm free. So this is the pivotal thing. That's about it. There's nothing else to it. Yeah, um, you know, uh, Jesus uh, once said that uh, whoever uh, tries to um, find their life uh, will lose it, but whoever loses their life for, you know, a higher purpose should find it, you know. And so I think that sort of like the same idea behind the submission to the will of God is that um, as long as you're trying to have a good life and you're just focused on that you'll never find it it always be a mirage but you know whenever you find sort of like um a higher purpose to be a part of um and you sort of lose yourself in that then you'll actually have the life that you wanted sort of yeah actually uh the word losing is kind of an angry word but finding yourself probably a better word you find yourself when you actually uh, submit because uh, the prophet said the one who understands his own self, his ego, or his own self is fine and will understand the God. Means our, our own desires uh, of, of bigotry or getting big or controlling powerful is, is all the godly desires, godly uh, attributes. That's probably what I think. That sounds good. And um, maybe after this whole COVID-19 uh, thing is over, uh, you and I can meet for lunch or something sometime. Oh, really? That, that, that would be nice. Yeah, sure. I don't have too many friends. Yeah, if you'd like to, I'd love to. Yeah, no problem. that would be uh, fantastic. Um, yeah, well, we, I, we can have further chat since this 19 is going on. And look at that miracle of 19, um, the, the mathematical miracle of 19 of Quran, or numerical, whichever one is. Uh, I'm going to check that out too again because it's a long time I've seen it. Okay, that, I'll definitely look into that. I don't that. know if it has any relation with the COVID 19 or not, but uh, since I start. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll, start, I'll be I'll looking forward to listening to you again and hear from you again. Uh, you know, I'm meeting obviously once this. Passes. And uh, if before we pass, there were no passes first. Yeah, I I hope this. Uh, I hope we figure out some way to do uh, testing quickly, and that we get a vaccine, yeah. and that uh, we're able to bring this thing under control. Speaking of, speaking of uh, testing, Iran claiming Iran claiming that they have. Uh, come up with the uh, testing method. You can test in seconds and with some electromagnetic waves or something. Hmm. But it was a small news I heard on the Pakistani TV, but never, uh, uh, not heard of, uh, from anywhere, uh, any other source. So look for that uh, also. I'm going to check that out too. So, because I'm surprised that it's such a big, uh, uh, big um, invention and nobody knows about it. Yeah, no, that would be... Uh good to learn about 
yeah, sure. I'll see you. Inshallah. Okay. Thank you so much. Inshallah. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.